is that it is traditional in all Royal Navy situations, but particularly on a ship, before you go flying, you are called to flying stations. So please welcome from their historic flights the mighty swordfish braced and either side by the black cats. So let's enjoy and savour this uh, really wonderful moment. Uh, we're looking at extremes uh, of history uh, because uh, of course the uh, swordfish uh, really came into service was a mid to late 30s aircraft. Uh, it began as a private venture to satisfy a need to replace the old Greek ferry uh, 3F aircraft. And uh, Swordfish, initially known as the TSR-1, would you believe? Yes, not at all to be confused uh, with the well-known jets that was developed in the 60s, but this is a torpedo spotter reconnaissance aircraft. Not dissimilar to what the Wildcats do now. Yep, uh, very true there, George. Um, and when you look at them, really uh, looking at the extremes of uh, ages as well. The uh, aircraft first flew in 1934 and was taken into the Royal Navy service in 1936 as the Swordfish Mark I. I think the, uh, the main thing I'd like to say about this, George, is when you consider the people in the sh swordfish, the crew in an open cockpit, who were in the South Atlantic, uh, correction, the North Atlantic, and ran off the North Cape, and the, the kind of weather situations that they were having to endure, not only for recovering and launching from aircraft carriers. The opportunity is for all of us now to enjoy the wonderful string bag, as it became known, uh, because it was a bit like the shopping bags of its day. It could accommodate practically anything, a 1,600 pound torpedo or a variety of depth charges, bombs, mines, rockets and flares. The crew of three that uh, Mike was referring to uh, were not afforded much comfort either. There is no heater on board and the open cockpit there providing a little shelter from the cold wind, rain and the weather of the day. Swordfish famous for numerous attacks and operations, perhaps the most famous being Taranto in November 1914, where 21 swordfish effectively stopped the Italian battle fleet but taking any aggressive part in World War II. Three of the famous uh, Channel Dash, uh, that's when six swordfish attempted to stop the Prince Eugen, the Scharnhorst and the Nijnau, and moving up the channel from Brest to Williamshaven. The hip ships were heavily defended and all six swordfish were shot down but the bravery of the crews in pressing home their attacks uh, was well represented and their commanding officer Eugene Esmond was posthumously awarded the VC, one of only two such awards awarded to the Fleet Air Arm Air Crew in World War II. He uh, was based at uh, DSTL uh, for many years as a military advisor and uh, was appointed to his current role as the boss in 2013. So there he goes, that's Chris and the mighty swordfish. Do give him a big wave and farewell there. An absolute pleasure. What a delight to see it and a glorious day. I'm so glad they made the effort to come up. Not an easy job uh, ferrying this aircraft around the UK when uh, the weather's up and down like a yo-yo.